My Game in Cave Runner is doing, well, not amazing. The game is an endless runner, and while I think it has a bunch of unique aspects, be it the actually interesting obstacles, do perfect. I'm calling you out, dude, but also the art style, the cool collaborative skins, I think the game has a lot to offer, but of course, there could always be more. I welcome you to my journey in saving this game from death and making it just as popular as my uh, sister was in high school. The game mostly lacks replayability. The gameplay loop is fine. You getting bored till you start another run, yo. Here at Road, don't forget about your gun, though. Feeling poor, so you grab a couple hundos. Flow obstacles, which you deal with in a cool way. You know, you have to, you have to aim and shoot. You can be set on fire and you have to roll it out, but, but you have to find safe places to roll. You can smack this boulder pile. It's, it's not just jumping over obstacles like, you know, some other games I knew. You loot a stack of shoot about a scurry like a sewer rat. This dude is lacking because the bear returning like a boomerang. You pass the flag, the roof is next, but just follow the route. The status too perplexed and realize on the spot that I ain't good. I'm dead. I died. Fuck! That's the gist of it. But what happens after you die? In the game, I mean, what after you die in the game? I don't know the answer to the other one. Your high score gets saved and displayed, and you can spend your collected coins in the shop where you can buy different outfits for your character. Let's check out our options real quick. The rewards for playing could be more valuable. The coins you get. While the skins are awesome, once you have your favorite skin, there's not much of a point in getting any of the other ones. Then the high score is cool and all, but you can't really brag about it unless you're in my Discord server, linked in the description, you know what I mean? However, the actual gameplay is also one to tackle. To get the game some more replayability, I'm going to look at the most replayable possible games out there. The roguelite genre. Through random level generation, obstacle generation, every run is different. Different. That's, that's that's already the case for me. But also every run you get completely different items, different builds. These change your powers, your movesets, your strategy for the run. And kind of sounds like you should add an item system to your game. But Gimbo, that's what I was getting to, Gimbo. Like I just explained, item systems can be a supreme aspect of a roguelite experience. In some occasions, a single item can change your run completely, while other item systems only work in little mini-upgrades. A good way to satisfy the player with an item system is by having the items combine. The first game to do this well was The Binding of Isaac, where its sequel almost completely focused on perfecting it. You could surely go crazy with combining different items and creating very, very interesting builds. Then Risk of Rain entered the chat and said, you know what, combinable items are cool, but what if you could stack them, hmm? Uh, thanks, man. While that turned most items into just stat boosts, since those make sense to stack, you know what I mean? Every other item is also still stackable. The very rare item that makes your attacks explode. Sounds like a, a nice single buff, right? But getting another one means that the explosions are even bigger now. Okay, and that's 43. Shoot to the... Roughly to the center of the volume. <laughs> <laughs> that obviously looks completely ridiculous, but also, wait a minute, go back. <laughs> Pay attention well, you can. Maybe you. We're, you can hear us laughing, you know, we're having fun. We had fun. It's fun to become ridiculously overpowered over time if only you have the correct build. That's kind of what I'm going for. Alright, enough introductions of why item systems are cool. Let's check out the new items. So first of all, I figured there could be a couple of upgrades for your moves directly, making them stronger. Now, I don't see how jumping could be better. Sure, you could just jump higher or for longer, but it's not necessarily an upgrade, since it will definitely also hinder you at other times. Same thing goes for rolling, but swinging your hammer and shooting the gun definitely could get some interesting upgrades, you know what I'm saying? Shoddy. Every time you pick one of these, you shoot an extra bullet shard at a slightly different angle from your regular shot, meaning that when you're, you're really good and you're really lucky, you get your gun to do this. What about the extended magazine, which allows you to shoot one extra time before having to reload? I mean, combining this with the shotgun is pretty fire, not gonna lie. Speaking of fire though, what about some fire bullets? Getting a chance to set an enemy on fire, killing them automatically a couple seconds later, not having to worry about damaging them anymore yourself. Uh, there's also explosive bullets though. These make bats explode once you kill them. You'll hit any other bat that's on screen with that explosion, destroying rock walls automatically, all that kind of stuff. By the way, the way you obtain these items is pretty interesting. Every 500 meters you encounter the corpse of a fallen traveler. The protagonist, being a scavenger, obviously quickly checks if the corpse has any items on them. 
this will pop open this menu, allowing you limited time to choose between these three items. I came up with giving the player the option to choose one of the three items, since that way you can allow the player to create their own build in some way, be strategic about it, use their game knowledge, all of that. While the randomness of the item still makes for different builds every time, and a high replayability factor, which, re remember, right? Full circle. Visually, the items took some work, though I, I think they look pretty solid. See, the problem is, a lot of these are physical items. You know, the idea being that you do actually find a physical blood pack that will allow you to regain enough blood to keep going. Going. It's you know it's a it's a little self revive. Same with the item that increases the invincibility duration you're in after being hit. Uh, it's a morphine shot. Again, a, a physical object you can just find on that. Whoa! Same with the item that allows you to throw a grenade at a group of bats once too many of them are on screen at the same time, instantly killing all of them. The idea of the item is that it's a trade off. This item is just represented by a physical grenade you could find on the corpse. Problem is that not every idea I had for items made sense being represented as a physical object. There's an item in the game that grants you temporary invincibility when you kill a bat. This item combines nicely with the morphine shot I explained earlier, since that will increase the duration of being invincible. You can also save up a bat, so that when you're in a desperate situation you can kill him and become invincible for a while. Okay, uh, that's a cool idea, yeah, I think that's a very cool idea. So. What object is gonna make me do that? A tennis ball? An obvious problem. But I'll just go ahead and, you know, have some items represented as more of an icon explaining the power of the object. Fire resistance is just a shield with a flame on it. There's an item where you heal over time, but the healing timer gets reset when the player shoots. This item is called stress relief, and it's it's just a blue brain. But shooting a loud gun will get you out of that zen stage, you know what I mean? A ton more items. Bulletproof armor, which grants overhealing. An item that turns your melee attack into some anime-style sword slash... But of course, remember. What are you gonna do with him? No, no, you should. The only problem for me is that this game is an endless runner, meaning that once you get too powerful to die, you actually can keep running forever, and that's not something I'm aiming for. While other roguelites have a defined ending, or, you know, sometimes the option to keep going, but at that point you're straying from the main objective anyways, making your own objective. Who's playing the Sonic rap? Come on, check it out. <laughs> My Endless Runner can be endless, you know? That's not kind of the point of it, there's no end to it. If you keep getting more and more items and they keep stacking and stacking, yeah, it gets pretty crazy. So sadly, I had to limit the amount of stacks per item. I know, I know, it's a sad reality, but if you can keep your run going for three hours straight and reach 117,000 meters, which is where the stacking ends, you're not gonna need those extra items, my guy, come on now. So the item system is cool, it's a thing now, huge replayability factory. Yeah. Get that list from earlier back in, ding! YouTube, ding! Sound effect just played, <laughs> that's a good thing. There are still some things left though. Saving the player's high score to a leaderboard is another way of adding replayability. It gives a lot more value of becoming better at the game. Luckily, Google Play just has its own leaderboard system and you know there are add-ons that allow you to communicate with it pretty easily and that's all not too crazy. No, the actual tough part is adding the leaderboard to this very cool looking, but uh, obviously not very modular, interface. Do I just slap it in a corner like the settings button? Do I add yet another hanging plank but there's not too much space? Or I'd have to redo all the existing planks, you know, make them smaller so that the new one fits in as well. Me and my Twitch chat came up with the idea of using a street sign. And I thought it would make for a dynamic addition if the sign connected the start screen to the shop. And yeah, it really did. It was, it's very cool, I like it. Ding! There was another one of those YouTube ding sound effects. Well, we're doing well. Only one last thing, that, that shop. <sighs> well, that's it. Nothing left to sell. How am I gonna feed my family? Oh my, I can sell these. Thank you, sir. Tell me your name. Boom, two very nice additions to the game, okay. These outfits were voted for by Twitch chat, and I think they turned out pretty sick. If you want to be there next time, I mean, you know, you can you can follow me on Twitch. But also, hey, new outfits? That means new posters. I especially like the museum pamphlet that must have been next to the Crusader armor display. Oh, and 
whatever museum they was in. Also, the Plague Doctor poster is a very cool looking propaganda poster using the imagery of a Plague Doctor with a nuclear explosion to show how completely screwed the world is with the government having these kind of weapons available. You know, comparing that kind of devastation to the plague. I'm actually very proud of the explosion. I drew the whole thing on stream and I, I'd never drawn an explosion before, yet it ended up looking really nice. But hey, list, please, give me that thing. <laughs> Boom! We, we did it! The game is now super replayable! Let's go! Wait a second, what am I doing? Adding more skins doesn't solve the existing problem. There needs to be a way to buy things other than skins, like little mini upgrades or something. It, this doesn't solve anything. Also, I added more replayability by adding items, but how could I forget about the second supreme aspect of what makes roguelite so replayable? The stage progression. Different. Multiple stages. Different stages changes the obstacles you face, makes for a nice difficulty curve and it keeps things fresh. What if my game had multiple stages you cycle between, let's say every a thousand meters? This keeps the obstacles themselves fresh, not just the gameplay, it's the perfect Sounds idea. Sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, I think I'll just do that next time.